everyone, it's Vanessa. Today I thought I'd do something different and do a voiceover wrap up because I didn't feel like filming. Um, so there's lots of adult fiction in this actually, and I would say highly regarded adult fiction that has come out in the last year or couple years. So stay tuned to see what I think about them. The first book that I finished in the month of April was actually The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. I've read this because I wanted to read more mysteries this year, and I definitely think this one delivered what I wanted from it, and that was to get me out of a reading slump. And it's a book that I read in a breeze, and I think that's the best thing about this book. I also thought that the horror creepy elements in the story were one of the best things about it, because I was super creeped out listening to the audiobook. If anything about creepy home with smart technology, living on hallowed grounds sounds interesting to you, I would recommend this. I think the house really elevated the atmosphere of this book. There's a big twist at the end, which I think is what made me not love this book as much. Like, I thought it was going to be really, really high rating for me right until the one of the last things that happened in the book, and I felt like it was a bit too much, but it was a fun ride, and I'm glad that I read it. The next three books I've actually returned to the library because they were on hold for other people, so here's some Wyoming countryside for you. So the next one is The Last Call by Elon Green. This was a really anticipated one for me, I've been hearing quite a lot of people talk about it, and it was also an ALC from Libra Femme, so I mostly listened to it and then I read some of the physical book as well. It's about the victims of the serial killer, and the serial killer mostly attacked uh, gay men who were pretty much closeted in this time period, which was like the 80s and 90s in New York, and their lives, and kind of their backgrounds and their families, and also finding justice for these victims. It's a little bit too short, there's not enough information I think given, and I think it just needed a little bit more editing and a little bit more diligence to it, I guess, because it does feel like you learn a lot in the beginning and then the case is wrapped up super quickly in like the last chapter. You barely get a sense of what it is that actually happened towards the end of this case. But I think it was worth my time. If you're a fan of true crime, this is something that you might want to look into. It's a case that I've never heard about and I did learn a lot about what it was like to be a gay man in New York City during that time period. The next book I read is The House in the Cerulean Sea, which was basically everyone's favorite book last year, so I thought that this would be for me, I guess, and I honestly think that that was a wrong assessment. I don't know what I was thinking of, you know, a house full of interesting children with interesting powers and fantasy elements and magical elements of that sort, and just like a very wholesome, sweet, nice cast and plot. This bordered on saccharine for me, and I think I just need to get over myself in thinking that books like this might be for me. This is not to say that I didn't enjoy it, I actually thought that parts of this were really funny and I chuckled, especially at Lucy. Some of the way that the dialogue and the prose is written is really charming and funny at times, so I like that, but I also thought that there was just a lot of moralistic teachings that the main character wanted us to learn about prejudice and about judging people before you get to know them. The next book I read was Trashed by Durf Backdurf. This is actually a fictional account. Every character in here has been made up, but it's written with the knowledge of what being a sanitation worker is like because Durf worked um, during his college years and like early 20s, I want to say, in um, sanitation. So he definitely has a lot of background knowledge on that and he explained kind of the different things about being a sanitation worker that could be annoying and not great. Another thing that I really liked about this book is all of the information that is peppered in about trash and how humans dispose of trash and the amount of trash that we dispose of or try to dispose of. He talks about recycling and he talks about what the dump is actually like and basically how disgusting humans are in disposing their trash. So this was quite insightful, so I would say that it did its job of teaching me a little bit about what it's like to be a sanitation worker and also what it is like to be on a grander scale of, you know, your community, your state, your country, the world of trash that we are in. The plot is just not great and the characters are really not memorable, but I think the facts and the information are the most interesting part of this book. The next book that I read, Children Under Fire, was my favorite book that I read in the month of April. It is an account of what it is like to live with PTSD uh, from gun violence. It follows specifically two kids, one named Ava and one named 
Taishan as they become pen pals and start to lean on each other after they've both faced their own uh, PTSD battles because of gun violence. Ava lost a friend to a school shooting um, committed by a teenage boy and she was like in first grade so she was tiny and Taishan lost his dad to gun violence. While it does talk a lot about Ava and Taishan's story, it also talks about other kids who have faced gun violence, things that have actually maimed them, but also a lot about the psychological and mental trauma that experiencing gun violence does to kids. So it is a very touching narrative arc of John Woodrow Cox interviewing these families and these kids, as well as things that we can do to lessen gun violence in the United States. The next book that I read is Turning 15 on the Road to Freedom. This is an autobiographical story told to the author from an actual uh, participant in the Selma to Montgomery March. She was one of the youngest there and it talks about the reasons that she wanted to march, what her dad thought about her wanting to march, uh, and what the actual experience was like. There's beautiful beautiful pictures in here and beautiful illustrations and I love how concise this is. It's great for teenagers who want to kind of dip their feet into learning more. It talks a lot about songs that they would listen to while they were marching and I started going on Spotify and listening to a bunch of them. Uh, she talks about some of her favorites and then I started seeing which ones were my favorites from the ones that she talked about. So it really mentions a lot about how powerful music was to the movement and to their march in 1965. This was a really lovely book, and I think if you're looking for some interesting insight, first-hand accounts from uh, people who were actually there during the civil rights movement, I think this is something you should pick up. Another book about the civil rights movement that I read in this past month was The Three Mothers by Anna Maleka Tubbs. This is a book about the three moms of Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X, and James Baldwin. So you learn about Louise, Bertus, and Alberta, how they raised their sons and their own histories. I think I have a more mixed reaction to this book than some of the reviews that I've read because I felt that this book was more surface level than I anticipated. I don't think there was quite enough information out there for tubs to put into her narrative and I think the main goals that she had here was to talk about black motherhood and I really loved her insights and her thoughts in the first chapter and in the conclusion. She really mentions why it is that she wanted to write about this and how personal the subject matter is. It made me want her to just write her own story about black motherhood from her point of view more than try to pull at straws in a way to find information about these three moms. The three moms definitely have a lot of things in common and there's definitely a lot of information that I found fascinating. Like for example, did you know that Martin Luther King's first name was actually Michael, not Martin? I didn't know that, but I learned that from this book. Um, so there's definitely nuggets in here that I thought were fascinating, but I think it comes down to the way that it is written. It really reads like a thesis in parts um, that's like not all the way there, not all the way at full capacity and at full insights. And I also really dislike in history books when the authors say, you know, like this is what they would be seeing or this is what they would be feeling or this is what they would be hearing or reading and there's no actual historical evidence to back up that information. I feel like I've had this conversation before of, you know, this is something that bothers me. I do think that this book is worth your time if you are just starting to learn about civil rights history or if you are particularly interested about black motherhood and the black mother specifically of these three important leaders. Then I read Nothing to See Here by Kevin Wilson, which has been a book that I've had in my possession for many, many months at this point. And I also thought that this book was just okay. I think I ended up giving it three stars. There were definitely aspects of it that were really quirky and funny, and I liked how um, the setup of the story was going and like the actual kids. But then I also just thought that nothing really happens in this. The tension between the main character and like her frenemy also felt unfulfilled to me. I guess you would say the romantic tension that they, they had for each other. And I also thought that the political aspect of this family would be more at play here too. And it was really more of like, the kids woke up, they did this that day, I taught them this, and then we went to sleep. And it was just that rinse and repeat. 
plot situation. So yeah, this I thought was going to be a little bit more meaningful, I guess, and it wasn't as meaningful as I thought that it, it could have been. Also peep at how I water damaged this book by accidentally putting it in the a same bag with a water bottle. Things to not do. Things that a librarian should know better. Oh hey, here's another mystery thriller that I actually really enjoyed this month. It was the month of that really working for me. This is Good Girl Bad Blood. It is the follow-up to A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, which I really enjoyed. And this is following Pip. Uh, dealing with the aftermath of what happened in the first book as well as um, solving a new crime so one of her friend's brother is missing and he actually went missing uh, at something that was connected to what happened in the first book there's a lot in here about uh, catfishing which I really enjoyed also still you have all of those podcast elements this book is great on audiobook and definitely recommend it to consume it that way I also think that this book did a much better job at showing us Pip as a character. I felt like in the first book she was a little bit at arm's length and I didn't truly connect with her. I think in this book I really got to see her insecurities, her her flawed nature, and also her anger and the mental state that she is in after being involved with all of these violent situations. I think really the only downfalls for this series is that I don't really get the main love interest and Pip together. Like, I don't see it all the way. And I think he's funny on his own, but I don't really see the chemistry between them. So that's the only thing that I didn't really love. But I definitely say that the last half just really picks up and everything starts coming to place and the puzzle pieces are really start falling together, which I enjoyed. I just heard that the third one is actually the last one, so I'm kind of sad about that. Um, because this is a YA mystery series that I think is actually delivering realness. The next book that I read, Thirsty Mermaids by Kat Lay, is a adult graphic novel about mermaids who basically do a spell to become humans, kind of like The Little Mermaid, but it's three of them who come into the world, and then um, it's them discovering what alcohol is, and making friends, and just being around in town and meeting people. This is a really silly, funny, light-hearted, friendship-focused uh, body positive graphic novel. I really love the art and the illustration style. I love the way bodies are depicted in it. I love the diversity of the different kinds of people that are depicted. I would say that the plot in this one and the characters maybe didn't land as well as Snapdragon did for me, which is the other book by this graphic novelist that I've read before. I was just expecting a little bit more from the plot and the pacing and the characters, but it was still a good time and I am happy that I read it. All right, everyone, here's yet another maybe too sweet and wholesome book for me. It is The Lager Queen of Minnesota by J. Ryan Straddle, and this is a book that time jumps it is a book that focuses on three women, two of them which are sisters that grew up in the 60s and the granddaughter of one of those women. And it's seeing the world through their eyes as they come to be businesswomen and workers and trying to find joy in their lives. One is really good at pie making, one is really good at making beer, and then the granddaughter becomes involved with beer and it's seeing how they all come back together towards the end as the two sisters have actually had a falling out and haven't spoken in many 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 years so a lot of it felt like they were very separate from each other right until the end i also thought that helen was really interesting in her like school years and i thought um, Edith was really interesting in her pie making years and we didn't really focus on that towards the second half of the book it was mostly towards the first half I didn't think Diana the granddaughter was as interesting as a character um, and yeah what else can I say about this book it's literally about wholesome grandmas making beer this is another book that should probably be a red flag to me that I don't like sweet books <laughs> All right, the grand finale and the antithesis of all those sweet books that I've talked about in this video um, is Acts of Desperation by Megan Nolan, a very intense, heavy, dark, disturbing at parts book. Definitely not sweet, definitely the opposite of sweet, and definitely a book that I loved. This book is so raw, it is so vulnerable, 
It is a book about a woman who feels like she can't exist without love. And it is about her constant need for this toxic idea of love and of being with a person. I want to start this by saying that she is aware that this is unhealthy. And I think that is one thing that I loved about this book is how self-aware and honest and upfront uh, the main character who is unnamed is in this whole book. She definitely knows that these aren't good decisions that she is making and yet she is still making them. So in the very same way of like luster and exciting times and normal people, you have characters who are making bad judgment calls, who know that these are bad judgment calls, um, but still I can't turn away and I can't stop watching this train wreck continue. And also just the sharp insights that she has about relationships, that she has about her body, that she has about work, that she has about friends. Uh, it's just fascinating to see this like internal monologue that is constantly running in her head. There are major trigger warnings in this book for man, what, what isn't a trigger warning in this book? Uh, you know, the way that she looks at her body, definitely disordered eating, constant, uh, cutting and self-harm, which is really heavy to read. Violence against women and this discussion about her wanting men to be violent with her at times and how, how weird of that is, but it's something that she talks about. There's also obviously a very toxic relationship and there's domestic violence as well. A lot of alcohol consumption that is actually disturbing. She's basically an alcoholic. You wanted to grab this character and just shake her and tell her it's gonna be okay. But first, you need to get out of this relationship. Second, you need to seek therapy, homegirl. I think we sort of got there towards the end. It definitely left me smirking and smiling. And I think she understood certain aspects and she was working through things. But just seeing all of this unfold, I was compelled to continue reading. I could not stop reading and I read this book in two days. I actually really love this book in all its heaviness and toxicity and sharp wit and insight that she has. Definitely will not get over her basically saying that the last man she's with in this book, she says something like, your smiles and your jokes nauseate me. <laughs> it's just amazing. Just amazing. I don't think that was any faster than a normal video filming and editing situation, but I think it was a little bit more fun. I think my thoughts come across just a little bit better not on camera, and also it's a little bit easier to re-record because I'm basically like importing and splicing the clips as I am going through what books I read. So it was an interesting editing experience, I would say. Um, if you like this style, let me know in the comments. Maybe I'll try it again. If you read any of these books or would like to read any of these books, let me know in the comments as well, and I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.